Hi guys, this is Sadek from Brabant.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the Pixel Experian Plus ROM on any Samsung phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. So as you might be aware, when it comes to flashing the GSI ROM, we usually flash the system IMG file in the system partition in the fastboot D mode. Likewise, we also disable the Android verified boot in the fastboot mode by flashing the VB meta file. But all of these things does not work in the Samsung ecosystem because things are completely different here in fact instead of the fast boot mode we have to use the download mode to get all the job done so that is why the steps are somewhat different in this regard there exist three methods the first one is via the blank v meta file the second one is using a pet file and the third is using a custom recovery so as of now i will focus on the third method itself it's quite easy to carry out with that said currently i'm using this tweak on the galaxy s20 fe but it should work across all the other Samsung phone as well. Granted, your phone is Project Travel supported. To verify the same, install the Travel Info app from Play Store. Then launch the app. Go to the Details tab and then make sure that it's showing as supported next to Project Travel. As you could see in my case, it's supported. Near about all the Samsung phone which launched with Android 8 Oreo or higher version should be supported. So if your phone is supported, then you are good to go ahead. With that said, here is a list of all the ROM names and the features which are working or not working. As of now, we will be flashing the Pixel Experience ROM onto our phone. The only caveat or drawback is that it's based on Android 13.1. I have tried newer version, but that caused a few issues on the phone. So as of now, the Android 13.1 is the best one, which gives the best mileage and is the most bug free version. As in when I find a newer version, which is not buggy and has all the required features i will update the video accordingly but as of now this is the best build which we have and in case of pixel experience the rom is no longer available as well so i don't think anything beyond android 14 will be available unless and until any third party mod or developer decides to pick up the project so with that said as of now the android 13 build is the official one and we are flashing the official gsi onto our phone so please take a backup of all the data on your phone and let's get started so get hold of the Pixel Experian Plus GSI ROM from the GApps link. And once you have got it, your first course of action is to extract the GSI ROM. So for that, the GSI ROM will be in a .img.exit format. So you have to install the 7-zip software to extract it. After installing the 7-zip, right click on the exit file, show more options, 7-zip, and extract to Pixel Experian Plus. And with this, you will get the IMG file. Now you have to unlock the bootloader on your Samsung phone as well. Regarding unlocking the bootloader, it will wipe off all the data, might make the warranty null and word as well. And moreover, it will also end up tripping Nox. Do keep in mind that Nox is a hardware component in the motherboard. And once it gets tripped, there is no going back. So apps like Samsung Pay and all the Nox secure features will no longer work even if you relock the bootloader. So if that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and unlock the bootloader. In this regard, you just have to boot your phone to the Download mode and use the volume up key. Press and hold the volume up key to unlock the bootloader and then boot to the OS. Connect your phone to the Wi Fi and make sure to re enable the OEM unlocking toggle and make sure that it's gray out. This will bypass the Vault Keeper as well. So let me do that. It will take only a few seconds. As of now, even though I've unlocked the bootloader, the OEM unlocking toggle is not there on my phone, I suppose. Let me have a look. So go to About Phone, Software Information, tap on build number seven times. Then go to developer option and as you could see the OEM unlocking is missing from my phone even though I've unlocked the bootloader so the fix is quite simple I just have to connect my phone to the Wi-Fi and after establishing a connection I have to wait for around 8 to 10 seconds and after that the OEM unlocking option will be visible so I have now online and now let me have a look whether the set option is there or not so as you could see, I have now got the OEM unlocking and I have bypassed the Vault Keeper. Moving on, let's enable the USB debugging as well. Enable the toggle next to it, tap on OK. And you might get one more prompt. In that prompt, tap on Allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So for that, you will have to first and foremost download the Android SDK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I have done the extraction in C drive. And as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once you've done the extraction, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you're getting an ID. 
If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone. And use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB fixes and verify that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next course of action is to install the TLD IP recovery onto your phone. So let me show you the guide for that as well. So I made a video on that as well, but still I'll show you once again how to get this job done. So while installing the recovery, there are two ways out. The multi-disabler and FB disabler. Most of the Samsung phones follow the multi-disabler, but some new Samsung phone and the phone which I am using, which is the Galaxy S20 FE, follows the FB disabler method. With that said, I'll show you both the methods. So first of all, I'll show you the FB disabler method. In this regard, the initial few steps are the same, but after that, the last step is different. So in the initial few steps, you will first have to unlock the bootloader which you have done. Then get hold of the recovery file from the official website or an unofficial trusted site like XGA. Apart from the TLDRP file, you also have to get hold of the VB meta patch file for your phone as well. Again, you will get the file from XGA website. Once you have got both the recovery and the VB meta in the tar format, let's move ahead. So now you have to get hold of the Odin tool. This will be used to flash the recovery. So download the tool and extract it onto your PC. And this is the Odin tool. You will get around four files. Launch the exe file. Click on OK. And now let's move ahead. Now you have to boot your phone to download mode. For that, there are quite a few ways out, including the hardware key combination. But for now, we will use the ADB command to get this job done. Simply type in the ADB reboot download command because this command is universal across all the Samsung phone. And your phone should now reboot into the download mode in a few seconds. Once that happens, we will now start off the flashing of the recovery file in the Odin tool. So give it a few more seconds and our phone should now boot into the download mode. As you could see, it's now in that mode. Now launch the Odin tool and make sure that your phone is shown here under the com section and the device is also added. Likewise, go to the option tab and please make sure to uncheck auto reboot. This is very important. Now click on AP and load the TWRP.tar file, which is here in my case. Then in the user data slot, you have to load the VB meta patch file. Again, I'm repeating in the AP, it's the recovery file. Whereas in the user data slot, it's the VB meta patch file. And also make sure to uncheck auto reboot. Once that is done, click on the start. And the flashing will now start and will take only around 8 to 10 seconds. Once the flashing has been done, you will now have to press and hold the volume down and power key for around 7 seconds. Now your phone will try to undergo a restart. While it's restarting, you will then have to press the volume up and power key. So I am sh will show you that. So first of all, press and hold the volume down and power keys and keep holding it until the phone tries to restart. So let's give it a few more seconds. And as soon as the phone is about to restart, you will now have to press and hold the power and the volume up keys and hold both this key for around seven seconds and let go of the key as well. And now your phone should boot into the TWRP recovery. If you haven't pressed the keys at the right time, then the custom recovery will be replaced by the stock recovery and your phone will boot to the OS. In that case, you will once again have to flash the recovery. But this time around, make sure to press the key at the right time. So let me see whether it is flashing is done or not. So in my case, I flashed the recovery successfully, but the job is only half done. Now comes the part of FB disabler or multi disabler. If you're using the FB disabler, then you have to go to wipe, advanced wipe, check mark, key data, key refugee, metadata and data. I will just the four partition over here as well. These are the four required for the FB disabler. Data, metadata, key refugee and key data and swipe to wipe. One that is wiped, you will have to do a format data as well, but this will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure you have taken the backup beforehand. Once the formatting is done, go to go back and now you have to do a reboot to recovery. This will take only a few seconds. We have done a reboot to recovery because we have to remount the data partition as well. And our phone should now reboot into the TWRP recovery. On the other hand, if you are using the multi disabler method, then after flashing the recovery file, you will first have to use the terminal window of the recovery. Let me show you how to use that. So for using the terminal, you have to go to the advanced section of the recovery. So this is only for the multi disabler and not the FB disabler. So go to advanced terminal type in multi disabler, hit enter and it will ask you to once again run this command. So once again, type in multi disabler and once that is done, you will now have to do a format data. So you may do so from the wipe advanced wipe and do a format data. After that, do a reboot to the recovery. And once you've done the reboot to the recovery, you are now good to go ahead. So in case of FB disabler, we had to wipe the four partitions 
and do a format data in case of multi disabler you have to execute the multi disabler command two times then do a format data and a reboot to recovery and once that is done your phone should now be visible on your pc as you could see it's visible here so now you must simply transfer the gsi img file onto your phone do note that in some cases your phone might not be shown here whereas in other cases even though your phone might be shown here but you might not be able to access the storage in both these cases you may also use the adb push command to get this job done simply transfer the file inside the platform tools directory and then use the command adb push rom.img space forward slash sd card and the rom will be transferred inside the sd card by sd card we mean internal storage you may also do a transfer to the data directory or the temp directory but it's recommended to use the sd card directory only for most cases so with that said the file is about to be transferred and then we will flash the rom file as well so guys the file has been transferred onto our phone so let's now flash the gsi file for that go to install tap on install image because it's an image file then choose the gsi file and select the system partition because we have to flash the gsi in the system partition and swipe to flash quite surprisingly the flashing will only take around four to five seconds as opposed to the usual android flashing it takes around six to eight minutes but in this case you will only have to do a flashing for four to five seconds and when that is done you will get an image flash complete now go back go to format wipe format data type in yes and hit the orange check mark blue check mark and the format data is now complete now you can tap on reboot system and your phone will now reboot to the os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case with that said let's wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and they might appear in around 8 to 10 seconds so let's just have a wait for that and it's definitely quite commendable that the flashing only took around 4 to 5 seconds because i haven't seen any rom flashing whether aosp custom rom or gsi rom be flashed such fast but it's quite a nice thing for us samsung users so with that said give it a few more seconds and as you could see this is the boot animation of the pixel experience rom and your phone should now boot into the rom in a few more seconds and then we will set up the rom as well so give it a few seconds so guys we are now inside the rom setup screen let's get started as of now i am skipping the initial setup process if you want you may connect your phone to the wi-fi link your google account and restore all the data but for now i'm skipping all the stuffs and i will take you to the os directly let me skip this as well and it should take a few more seconds so let's skip the navigation as well and swipe up to go home and as you could see we are now inside the pixel experience plus rom it has some of the useful pre-installed google apps and this is the qr styles let's access the settings menu and from here you may access the required features as well for example if you go to the wallpaper and style you may change the wallpaper of your choice there are quite a lot of wallpapers from the pixel phone that you choose from all of these are not on the phone but you have to download it and the theme will change accordingly likewise you may also change the color of the ui ux from here and you may also go to the basic color and choose even more colors from here likewise you may switch to the white theme or light theme from this page but for now let's stick with the dark theme then you may also enable the theme icon in the home screen as you could see they are now enabled then apart from that you may change the app grid size so 5 cross 5 is the maximum which we have and that should be sufficient for most of you and that's just about it in the home screen so let's see this is all we have now so there is no separate home screen on the lock screen this is all the features that we have apart from that let's access the display section and see any new tweaks there or not display size and text you may change the font size display size enable the bold text as well double tap to wake tap to sleep double tap on the status bar to sleep so after enabling this feature you will have to do a system UI restart in my case the features are working but if it's not working in your case then you will have to do a system where you start and then the feature will work so both of them are working as expected and in the system tab is there anything new as such so you may update the rom directly from here update the section and change the gestures or tweak the buttons from here the control buttons as well and even take a partial screenshot using this feature so guys that is all from this video as you might be aware the pixel experience is a clean stock ui experience but just the required feature set with that said you may access the phs treble settings from here and this is the qualcomm feature if you have a qualcomm device then you will get these features with regard to the stereo then you have the samsung features as well
so in samsung features you get the few audio tweaks the screen tweaks as well and a few miscellaneous options are also there so do note that all of these are advanced level tweaks and you should only carry out if you are aware of what you are doing otherwise it might have some negative consequence on the phone as well then under miscellaneous features you so you may use the audio tweaks uh, and display if you are facing any issues with regard to that display go to force fps and you may change the fps from here and then have a look at the result as well likewise a few backlight and camera tweaks are also there so if the gcam is not working in the gsi rom you may enable the force enable camera to api all three and there are a few other miscellaneous tweaks with regard to the navigation bar and double tap to wake debug sensors but all of these are against various advanced level functions and please do not interact with them then if you are having issues with regard to the 4g or calling feature then you may request ims network and force 4g calling on your phone then a few customization tweaks accent color is only default you might not get any features as such over here as you could see only one font size is there apart from that because gsi roms are not usually known for having numerous customizations and on top of that we are using a pixel rom which just offers a clean stock ui experience without any tweaks as such so guys on that note we round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching